Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. What is the meaning of life, friends? You think, Pastor, that's a really good question to ask us on a Sunday morning. It's a very long conversation that we could have about what is the meaning of life. But it's actually a pretty simple question to answer when you look at it from God's Word. There's two different destinations that are preached in our world. One that's in the Bible and one that's not. Without the Bible, the destination of life is really no destination at all. What do you hear more often? Live your life for the moment. Live it for the right here and now, the experiences that you have today, because who knows about tomorrow? Enjoy today. What does that phrase promote as your destination? Your life goal, your life purpose. Happiness. Today, in the moment. However, it does it in a way that assumes that your future is insecure. That there's no reason planning ahead because who knows what's going to happen tomorrow? Who knows what's going to change in your life? But you know, today is here and the moment is here. But that changes the way you think about how you live your life in the moment, today. If there's no end goal, if there's no thing that you're reaching towards or going to, it changes the way that you do things. If it's about today, yeah, use your body to do whatever you want, to have fun right here, right now. And that makes perfect sense. Right? If it's about today, what, what, what doesn't matter about the consequences tomorrow. It's about today. And today may be a great day. You may have a lot of fun doing what you do, but maybe the next today isn't as fun. And not just on the physical side of things, but perhaps emotionally and spiritually, you are destroying yourself day by day. And then even when you try to live in the days ahead, living in the moment becomes nearly impossible as you're buckled in guilt in shame, in the consequences of your moment-by-moment -moment living. You've destroyed your future. But that's what you hear all the time. That the goal is to live for today as if today is the end. But Christians, that is not your final destination. You have eternity guaranteed to you because of Jesus Christ. When you were baptized and brought into the family of God, when you came to faith, like Myla does today, you were called out of this world and made a citizen of heaven. At that moment, because of God's promise and His mercy, you no longer were living for today, or even tomorrow in this life, or until the day you die, but you are living for the destination of having eternity with your Jesus forever. Now you better bet that that changes everything. That changes the meaning of the moments. Every single one of them. And I want to show you how in this text that Jesus so clearly demonstrates the purpose and meaning behind His life and how that gives your life meaning and purpose every single moment. In the good times and in the bad. What do you see from Jesus today? What's He talking about? This hour that He keeps mentioning. He's talking about the fact that he is about to go to Jerusalem to suffer and die for you and for me. That wasn't really something that was exciting. 
And if you are living for the moment of today, that's definitely not a good plan for happiness or for enjoying the day. Jesus knew that he was going to suffer and die the most excruciating physical pain and even worse, spiritual pain as he separated from God and the punishment of hell that comes on him on the cross as he pays for all of our sins. That's what Jesus knew about and exactly where he was going. And then he just says kind of candidly in the middle of our text today, Now my soul is troubled. Jesus as a human is struggling. He knows what's coming. And you know, if you know something bad's coming, like for me, it's knowing I have to go to the dentist. If I know I have the dentist next week, I will dread it every moment because I hate the dentist still. I'm terrified. I still am. I dread every moment leading up to it. But it's one of those things that it's not really about the moment. You've got to think long term because I don't want to lose my teeth in two years. All right. I'll go. But Jesus is facing death and eternal death. And he says, my soul is troubled. And rightfully so. Jesus is terrified as a human of what is coming. And yet he asks himself, but what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? What should he say? What would you say? Knowing that you're about to face your own death. Knowing that you're about to carry the punishment for the world's sins. What would you say to the Father? Probably not too much, actually. You'd probably do like the disciples and run. Get me out of here. But what does Jesus say? Father, save me from this hour? No! For this reason I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. The meaning in every moment of Jesus' life was determined before he was even born. From eternity. Before God created the world, he knew what was going to happen. He knew that Adam and Eve would fall into sin. He knew that you and I would be broken people who would struggle with daily life. Who would be filled with sin that caused us to do the things we do not want to do. That we would be helpless and lost to fulfill our purpose. That we know that we should have. To follow the Lord and to glorify His name. To live in His presence. We know that's where we should be. But we're broken. And we can't get there. And so before all of this happened, God made a plan to send His Son into the world and plan His every moment in this world so that every miracle, every sermon, every single act of kindness and compassion, every single slash of the whip, every single nail pound, as those nails were driven into his hand, every single second he spent on the cross, every single day he spent in the grave, the tomb being rolled away, and everyone he spoke to, and how long it has been since then that you are standing here and the world still exists so that He can tell you that every single moment of His life was for you. It was planned before the beginning of time for you. And Jesus there in that moment says, Should I run away? No. Because I came to this hour and this moment and this death. So that I could die for your sins. So that you could find hope as a child, as an adult, and on the day of your death. That you will have hope from the beginning to the end of your life. Because I have died for you, Jesus says to you in these words. Earlier in our text, he says this. Unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it continues to be one kernel. But if it dies, it produces much grain. What is Jesus talking about? Some of you maybe have farming in your background, but you take one kernel, and what happens when you put it into the ground? 
Well, it grows. And it produces a new plant. Many times, hundreds of times what it was when you put it into the ground. It's an amazing thing that God has done. But Jesus isn't just talking about farming. He's talking about the resurrection of the dead. And Paul lays this out for us in 1 Corinthians 15. And these are the words he uses to point right back to this. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since death came by a man, the resurrection of the dead also is going to come by a man. For as in Adam they all die, so also in Christ they will all be made alive, but each in his own order. Christ as the first fruits, and then Christ's people at his coming. Jesus knew the meaning of his life was to give it up and to die for you and for me. So that by his death he would rise, paying for all of our sins and guarantee that you too would rise to eternal life. Every moment of Jesus' life had meaning for you and me. And that changes the way we live our lives too. Your life is not just about today. You're right, you might not know how long you're going to live. And you have seen terrible examples of people who have died suddenly and unexpectedly, and it's devastating. As the life that we thought they would live and expected someone to live an ordinary amount of time, that they didn't have that chance. How terrible. And shouldn't we then live for the day, for the moment, because we don't know if tomorrow is going to happen? In one sense, yes. We live for today, we, we act out today, not knowing for sure if tomorrow will come, but we live today knowing we will live forever. We may not have a tomorrow here on this world, but we have an everlasting in heaven with God. Because of what Jesus has done for us on the tree. Do you see how that changes the meaning of your every moment? It means that today, your purpose isn't in life just to be happy and do whatever feels right. But today gives you a chance to prepare for eternity. And to prepare those around you for eternity. Not everyone knows this Jesus who gave up his life and everything he did to save you. So what should you do today? If their tomorrow is not guaranteed, tell them about the one who was lifted up to draw all people to himself. As he told us in our text today. Tell him about the one who always cared about others before himself. Who always served. Who always loved. Who never sinned. And who died for us. In your daily life, think not just what is going to serve me, but what is going to glorify God's name in my moments. What can I preach by the way I live my life, not just for an easy life, but sometimes running full speed towards persecution, towards hatred, and even towards death. But you do so knowing you have eternity, it's ready for you, it is done. You have meaning and purpose today because God is in you. He's working in you and He will give you eternal life. So what is your meaning in the moment? What can you do with your simple, ordinary things today? What do you have on your schedule? How can you make that about glorifying God's name instead of your name? How can you share that beautiful message of Jesus today so that that person in your life has hope for eternity? May we go with the peace of knowing that Jesus has saved us. That He has given up His every moment so that we can have eternity with Him. And may we serve God and follow Him to the cross, knowing that it's just the beginning. 
for each and every one of us. Let us find immense meaning in every moment today. Amen. Please rise.